So here we are, day six, the last and final day of our epic series filming with renowned bootmaker Lee Miller of Texas Traditions. Whenever it comes to bootmakers, there is none more famous right now than Lee Miller, widely regarded as doing some of the finest work in the entire world. And so with that, we couldn't have been more proud, more privileged to have been invited inside his workshop as he opens up his craft to us and shows us everything involved in the creation of a handmade pair of cowboy boots. Now today is a day that I've truly been looking forward to for a long time because it's a delivery day. This is the day where the boots receive their final polish and then are delivered. So we've got a few surprises in store. Of course, I can't take delivery of a beautiful pair of Western boots wearing what I have on today. So we've got a little bit of a surprise in store for you later. So join me as we walk inside Texas Traditions to see this incredible project come to a climax. So while the boots are in the trees, it's the perfect opportunity to go ahead and clean them by cleaning, just inspecting them, removing any stray rubber cement, uh, any, any particular lines of uh, silver marking pen that were used. And then we'll go ahead and um, I'll go ahead and condition them. And I'm, I'm using a nice conditioner, top and bottom, to go ahead and just put a little moisture back into the leather. Um, that's the only thing that I'll be doing to the tops is conditioning the tops and just rubbing them down nicely. The foot portion is going to be polished with uh, Saphir products, the cream and the tin polish. And then after that, we'll go. I'll sign them and put in the heel pads and the boots are ready to try on. So this is the, this is just the, the rubbing of the tops and the foot with this conditioner that's been put on. So this one is done. Now I'm going to take out the trees. There's a wedge. And you've got a tree left and right, front and back. Definitely, I'm, I'm using the conditioner and letting it set a little bit so it'll soak in. I don't want to put it on and immediately take it off. I want it to soak in a little bit. There are many different types of conditioners that you can use. This particular one that we're using is just is very gentle and it's not going to change the color of the leather. Some of them do. Some of them will darken the leather and I don't want to do that. Not on a new boot. So you don't want it to be greasy, um, and you, so you want the conditioner to be mild. Traditionally, in a cowboy boot, you have all this decorative work on the tops. You can't really apply a, a, a black cream polish to it because you're liable to get it on the stitching and change the color. So if you were to polish the tops, you could use a neutral cream polish, but it's better just simply to just polish the foot portion and not the tops. Um, the, on, in an extreme situation, I would polish the tops, but that's only if it was called for. But in a normal situation with a new boot like this, I would never polish the tops. Um, this conditioner that I'm using is giving it a luster, but it's, it's just a mellow luster. It's not a bright sheen. Some bootmakers use different products that will create a bright sheen. Um, some of them are liquids, some of them are sprays. Um, I prefer to just le leave it somewhat natural and just let a, a, a nice gentle conditioner make it look pretty. But there are different approaches. This is just the approach I chose. 
Uh, some bootmakers will have a four-step spraying process where they literally spray the entire boot with a cleaner, conditioner, and two different levels of shine. Uh, I think it doesn't, to me, it doesn't look natural. It looks more plastic, and I would prefer not to do something that like that. But there are different approaches. This is just the approach I take that I like. So this is done. And let's remove the trees. You're an aficionado of the Saphir. Now, um, I know there's different ways of applying it, and uh, you can use a, a rag. Some people just use their fingers. I actually prefer using a sponge because I can really get in the little crevices better. Yeah, there's different ways to apply uh, cream polish, and I'm choosing to use a sponge for the very reason that a sponge allows me to get in all the crevices so I can do I can get a little bit better coverage but you know some people will use their their hands some people will wrap a cloth around their fingers and apply it that way um, the sponge has the benefit of just being allowing you to get in all the little tight areas that you could never get in with any with a cloth I just want to be very careful to get it right where I want it and nowhere else. And so a nice coat of Saphir Cream Polish. I, I absolutely love this product. You know, one of the things in, in making boots is trying to find good, you know, just good products. And the Saphir is wonderful. Um, and so after discovering the Saphir, we've never really ch tried anything else because it's just such a good product. And uh, I wish it was better known in the, in the U.S. But everybody that we make boots for, we try to get them to use Saphir. So a nice coat of, a light coat of cream and the mate will be the same thing. Get really good coverage with this. With cream polish, there's no real need to let it set. So once it's applied, I can shine it, brush it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and rag it. So everything has to be brushed and ragged. This uh, using the rag is bringing, bringing the shine a little bit a little bit brighter you have to every time you use any polish you it's not just simply brushing it you need to go ahead and to rub it with a cloth or some people um, use this product to give it a nice shine but the brushing is the beginning and then the rubbing with something to, so this is just the first step in finishing the boots. So now we get to use the beautiful Saphir product. And I'm just looking for the right color, negro. Okay, so I'm gonna use this beautiful tin polish and get a nice shine from it. There we go. And a light coat is really sufficient. A heavy coat is not recommended.
Once again, I'm using a sponge to put it on so I can get in all the crevices. And this is taking a beautiful shine. This ostrich loves this product. One of the last steps in making a pair of boots is just signing them. And so uh, in, in this shop, July of 1977, Peter Fonda was book one, page one. So Kirby is book 20, page four. So I'm gonna sign the boots just the way that we've been signing them since 1977. Book 20, page four. And that just tells us when the boots were made. Well, here we are. Uh, it's been almost five years, and now we are full circle back into the boot shop where all this began, uh, right in front of the measurement stand where Lee uh, started all of this by taking the bespoke measurements uh, of my feet. And I couldn't be more excited for finally receiving these absolutely incredible boots from Lee Miller and Texas Traditions. I thought it would be only appropriate to honor these boots with the proper outfit, so I dug into my closet and pulled some things together. I've got a tweed jacket from a late friend of mine uh, that is really perfectly cut for Western wear, a little bit longer uh, in the skirt, scalloped pockets, beautiful, nice, heavy kind of Prince of Wales pattern here. I've got a shirt from Hamilton Shirt Makers. It's called the Lyle Lovett shirt. Uh, and of course, Lyle worked with Hamilton to design this shirt. And of course, Lyle is one of Lee's many famous customers. It's got pearl snap buttons. Uh, and again, this shirt is absolutely perfect for what we're about to see. Uh, up next, I've got a belt buckle that is actually from my late grandfather. Uh, this was a belt buckle uh, he, uh, I guess, won or was gifted in 1982, uh, back whenever he was a Ford dealer. Uh, you can see uh, it's really commem commemorating uh, him being the largest Ford truck dealer at that time. I've got a pair of Wranglers, and soon we're going to have a proper pair of Texas Tradition cowboy boots. Well, Lee, oh. this, is, uh, this is really exciting. Yeah. I couldn't be uh, more honored. I have to say I've, it's a little bit uh, surreal for me. I mean, all the work that we've put in, not just to making the boots, but really documenting and filming this entire process. And, yeah. and here we are. We've got the completed boots right there. And I have to say, wow, wow. stunning. Yeah, it's been, it's been uh, uh, the process of the measuring, which we did about five years ago. And then designing the boots, they have the iconic tulip pattern, which we're known for. Mm -hmm. But we went ahead and uh, did something unusual for you, Kirby. We did a folded tulip. Yeah. And so that's really the first time we've ever done it. Yeah, pretty and, exciting. Uh, yeah, so it's the, the tulip pattern is very old. So we've got your last, your patterns, your tracings, and now we have the boots. Yeah. Well, I mean, it really kind of pulls everything together with the name Texas Traditions because that's what Western cowboy boot making really is. It's a tradition, mm -hmm. and it's yeah. a tradition very unique in a lot of ways to this state of Texas. Mm -hmm. And you're carrying on the tradition uh, of Charlie Dunn, right? And then we spoke with Charlotte, and she's kind of the next generation uh, carrying that tradition forward. And it's just exciting, and I really have to say, uh, pretty surreal to kind of see these boots here and especially knowing just how much work that goes into creating them. Yeah, and over the last few days, you've been documenting all of that, and you can kind of see these are the, there's a lot, it takes a lot of time to do this. Yeah. Yeah, so you can make the decorative, up, decorative uppers, but also just the physical act of just putting the soles and heels on, building them, finishing yeah. them. And so now we have the finished the boots. boots, and we're ready. Uh, let me bring... Yeah, may I? Yeah, absolutely. There you go. And, yeah, thank and you. So this is, uh, we have a smooth ostrich foot portion, mm -hmm. and we have a kangaroo top, and we did your a Charlie Dunn style initial for you. Mm -hmm. And then this has the added bonus of a little map of Texas mm -hmm. placed right there. Yeah. Um, but uh, so these, these are wooden peg construction, sewn sole, and the heels were built level by level, piece by piece finished. Yeah, incredible. I mean, one of the things that is so striking to me about a pair of Western cowboy boots is just, uh, in many ways, that juxtaposition of uh, the utility of this being a proper functioning boot. I mean, this is as durable of a boot as whenever Charlie was making them back in 1915. Uh, but marrying that with just the beautiful uh, artistry and craftsmanship that goes into the boot tops, 
Uh, and then the ability for the uh, the customer to be able to integrate, you know, really personal meaning into this. Yeah, and that's the, the, so it's really it's fitting your foot and also just doing a beautiful design and then doing it all in a traditional manner. Yeah. Um, yeah. These will last a long time. Yeah. Well, indeed. I mean, one of the things you know, just throughout this time together, you know, I've actually seen firsthand the customers bringing boots back into the shop yeah. that they've worn for 20 or 30 years. Exactly, yeah. And Smooth Ostrich is incredibly durable, beautiful Italian kangaroo tops. This boot's gonna last a long time. Yeah. And it's meant to be worn. Mm -hmm. And so now we need to see how they fit. Yeah, well, let's do it. Okay. Here we go, pretty exciting. There we go. You said they'd be a little bit tight that first time, right? Yes, and we want them to be tight. Yeah. They're gonna fit better if they're a little harder to get on. Sometimes you have to stand up to get into them. Yeah, definitely use the pull straps. Yeah. There we go, wow. I mean, they feel amazing. What do you think? Let's go ahead and see how they fit. I want to make sure that the ball is correct, which it is. Then the waist and the instep fits you beautifully. Really does hug your foot. Very nice. Let's check the mate. So the ball. All the way up. It fits wonderful. So the ink print um, is giving me a lot of information. And from the, from the straight ball back, um, it's pretty simple to see how to fit your foot. Mm -hmm. But from the straight ball forward, that's really where the art comes in. Um, and what I've tried to do is not clip the great toe. Clipping the great toe means to push it away from the body center line. Mm -hmm. I wanna make sure that I fit the, the great toe correctly. Also, the way that your, your foot is, is uh, your foot is, your toes are greatly staggered, and I wanted to make sure that I didn't bother any of the toes. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is the comfort aspect of it, and this is the health aspect of it. And I had to kind of marry all that together. So like I said, from the straight ball down, this is all very straightforward to see how to do it. From the straight ball forward, up through the toes, that's where the art comes in. Yeah, and that's where it's the experience of the maker, and um, you know that's I, I want to make sure I fit your foot in a healthy way. Yeah, not to create any foot problems. Mm -hmm. If I was to go ahead and to fit your foot too tight through that area, you would develop foot problems. Yeah. So this is just so this is the ink print showing me what to yeah. do. Well, that's one of the things that again it astounds me is just how multidimensional kind of this this craft is. I mean, you've developed a name for yourself as being an exceptional fitter. I mean, having been trained in that school by Charlie Dunn, who himself was known at the time as being an exceptional fitter. So the work that goes in to this and to setting up that last it's is critical. what is yeah. critical and yeah. is what makes a pair of boots that, yeah. you know, that they someone can wear all day. Yeah, they have to fit. Yeah. And, and, and that's what I've tried to do is I've tried uh, we, the boots. I'm looking at wrinkles. And there's an absence of wrinkles. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. Yeah, no wrinkles. So the foot is being held as if it was laced in a shoe. Mm -hmm. And then the fore part, I want it comfortable for the toes. So as you wear them, your toes are never going to be barking at you, going, "Oh my goodness." Yeah, Th that's the worst feeling. Yeah. So, um, but yes, the, it all started with the ink print, and then all the girth measurements and tracings, producing the last. Um, but. Um, they look exceptional. Yeah, on they you. feel they, great. They literally look curvy, like you were poured into them, <laughs> which is what I want. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah, very nice. They're beautiful. Yeah. a wonderful fit. Yeah. Um, but but this this is the hardest part in making anything 
for feet is making the last. That's where generally if a person's gonna mess up, this is where they'll make a mistake. Yeah. And so that's where I put all my focus mm -hmm. is just starting out correctly. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and you've heard people that, I mean, of course, we've all met someone that has purchased a beautiful or a bespoke pair of shoes, but they can't stand to wear them because yeah. they're not comfortable. Yeah, it doesn't really matter Defeats how. Defeats the purpose. Yeah, it doesn't matter how beautiful they are. They have to fit. They have to feel good on your feet. Yeah. So so this is a uh, this is five years in the making, and they yeah. look really good on you, Kirby. They yeah. fit your foot in every nuance. Mm -hmm. So thank well, you. Lee. Hey, thank you so much. Thank I you. mean, what an absolute privilege. Yeah. And thank you so much for everything you do for just quality craftsmanship well, thanks, and tradition. Kirby, yeah. Th I really enjoy, yeah. uh, I, I enjoy doing this work yeah. and, and seeing people wear our boots. So yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank you.